In an arithmetic sequence, to get from any one term to the next, we're always adding the same amount. For instance, if you consider the sequence of numbers we have here, we quickly see that to get from any one term to the next, we're always adding 4. Indeed, from 3 to 7 I'm adding 4, from 7 to 11 I'm adding 4, and so on and so forth. And if I were to ask you to write the next three terms of the sequence, then I'm sure you'd have no trouble in telling me that those would be 23, 27, 31, and so on and so forth. Now, the amount we always add is known as the common difference, and I'll just write that. That's common difference. There we go. And we usually refer to it with the letter D. D as in difference. So for this sequence, the common difference D is equal to 4. Now, I'm sure you'd agree that it's quite easy to find the next term of the sequence, but what if I were to ask you what's the 101st term of the sequence? Well, one way of finding out would be to keep on adding 4 until we reach the 101st term of the sequence, but that would take a bit of time. And so instead of doing that, we learn about the formula for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. And here's the formula. The nth term is equal to the first term, u sub 1, plus, in parentheses, n minus 1, times the common difference d. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box that formula. Do make a note of it. This is the formula for the nth term. And in fact, I'll go ahead and write that. That's formula, formula, for the nth term. I'll just write for nth term. There we go. Now, this formula makes things look a little more complicated than they actually are. So let me quickly remind you of a bit of notation here. When I write u sub 1, that's referring to the first term of the sequence. Remember that we refer to any term of the sequence with a letter, typically u, as well as a subscript which tells us which term we're dealing with. So u sub 1 refers to the first term of the sequence, and is therefore equal to 3. u sub 2 would be equal to 7, u sub 3 would be equal to 11, u sub 4 would be equal to 15, and so on and so forth. So for the sequence of numbers we have here, u sub 1 would be equal to 3. The d we have inside this formula is the common difference. Remember, that's the amount we have to add to each term to get to the next. And so for this sequence of numbers, d would be equal to 4. And provided we know what the first term and the common difference d are, we can define the sequence's formula. So for this one, it would be u sub n equals to u sub 1, which remember is 3, so that's 3, plus, in parentheses, n minus 1, times the common difference d, which remember is 4. So that's 4 here. And that's this sequence's formula. Done. But how do we actually use this? Well, let's say I wanted to calculate the seventh term of this sequence. Then all I would have to do is replace every n that I see inside this formula by 7. And if I did that, that would be u sub 7, the seventh term, equals to 3 plus 7 minus 1, so that's 6, times 4. And that's equal to 3 plus 24, which equals to 27. And that's the seventh term. And in fact, we could check that answer since we had written the seventh term up here. That's the 27 we have. And what's important to realize looking at this formula, and in general looking at the formula for the nth term, is that the number multiplying the common difference d is always one less than the number of the term we're after. So for instance, if I wanted the fourth term, I would have a three multiplying the common difference d. If I wanted the ninth term, I'd have an eight multiplying the common difference d. Or even if I wanted the 100th term, then I'd have a 99 multiplying the common difference d. And to illustrate that, let's go ahead and calculate the 101st term, so u sub 101. Well, that will be equal to the first term, 3, plus 101 minus 1, which is 100, times the common difference, d, so times 4. That's equal to 3 plus 400, and that leads us to the 101st term being equal to 403. And we're done. Let's quickly look at another example. In this first example, and in fact I'll write example 1 at the top here, the amount we were always adding was positive. And so let's look at a second example in which the common difference is negative. So say I have the sequence of numbers 22, 19, 16, 13, 10, and so on. Now in this case, as we go from left to right, we can see that we're always subtracting the same amount. Indeed, 22 minus 3 is equal to 19, 19 minus 3 equals to 16, and so on and so forth. 
But remember, we define the common difference, d, as the amount we always add to get from one term to the next. So what happens when we're subtracting? Well, what's important to remember here is that when we subtract a number, like 3 in this case, it can be thought of as adding a negative number. In other words, subtracting 3 is the same thing as adding negative 3. And so for the sequence I wrote here, the common difference d would be equal to negative 3. Now, if we want to define the formula for the nth term of this arithmetic sequence, remember the only two things we need are the common difference, which we have, that's negative 3, and the first term, so in that case that's u sub 1, which equals to 22. Once we've made a note of those two things, we can use the generalized formula for the nth term, and state that the nth term of the sequence equals to u sub 1, so that's 22, plus n minus 1, times the common difference negative 3. And that's this sequence's formula for the nth term. Now, say I wanted to calculate the 21st term, then I would write u sub 21, which equals to 22 plus 21 minus 1, so that's 20 times negative 3. And that's equal to 22 plus negative 60, which equals to 22 minus 60, Finally, u sub 21, the 21st term, is equal to negative 38. Done. And so that's what arithmetic sequences are. Sequences of numbers in which to get from one term to the next we're always adding the same amount, known as the common difference, and whose formula can be fully defined, provided we know its first term and its common difference d. And there we go.